What up everyone, it's your boy xman 87 here bringing you another Marvel Legends video and what I have for you today is the Marvel Legends Avengers Wave Controller Build-A-Figure Series Madam Hydra Action Figure Review. Before I get into everything, if you could please leave a thumbs up like rating on the video, it'll help show your support for my channel and I greatly appreciate it. Now, with that said, it's time for me to give you another one-two punch episode of the Uncanny X-Man E story time, and then we'll take a look at the figure. Let's go! Before I begin, it's important to note that there were multiple women that took the moniker of Madame Hydra, such as Elisa Sinclair, who during Secret Empire brainwashed Steve Rogers thinking he was a double agent for Hydra, for whom she sacrificed her life for, since considering him as the son she's never had. So I'm only covering two Madame Hydras for time's sake, and that's Ophelia and Val. Ophelia Sarkissian first appeared in Captain America issue number 110 in 1968 as Madame Hydra, then later as Viper in Captain America issue 180 in 1974, and was created by Jim Steranko and Stan Lee. First appearing as Madame Hydra, fighting the Avengers and Captain America, this character has always been a maniacal opportunist and agent of general chaos and anarchy. Five years after her first appearance, she returned and took the name of another supervillain who was using the codename Viper during an attempt to take over a terrorist organization named the Serpent Squad. The name stuck. Her long-standing relationship with Spider-Woman began in 1982 when she appeared in Jessica's solo series. As written by Chris Claremont, the idea that Viper was Jessica's real mother was introduced, but immediately retconned away the next year as a creation of Morgan Le Fay in Captain America issue 281. Over the years, she battled pretty much the entire Marvel Universe, from teaming up with Silver Samurai to take on the New Mutants, to the Avengers, Daredevil, S.H.I.E.L.D. along with Nick Fury, and most notably the X-Men several, several times always known for crazy schemes. In the late 90s, a storyline was introduced whereby she married Wolverine for real to become ruler, crime lord of Madripoor. They would then divorce and she would lose control of Madripoor to Mystique. In Secret Warriors 2009, her true backstory as a long-term trainee, agent, and servant of Hydra was put in place and she returned to prominence as Madame Hydra again, seizing control of the remnants from Hydra away from Baron Von Strucker, as well as taking over AIM, Hammer, and the Hand after the collapse of a crazy scheme by Norman Osborn. Then there was Contessa Valentina Allegra de la Fontaine, aka Madame Hydra, who first appeared in Strange Tales issue number 159 back in August 1967 and was created by Jim Steranko. The death of Val's parents led her to join S.H.I.E.L.D. During this time, she met her then-lover Nick Fury, who was impressed by her abilities. With her skill progressing through time, she became a leader in S.H.I.E.L.D. and was appointed leader of their Fem Force which is a special S.H.I.E.L.D. unit consisting of only women that would later be led by Sharon Carter. Though she hadn't been seen in a very long time, Val makes an appearance in the Scroll Invasion arc. However, this person is actually a Scroll sent to spy on Nick Fury and learn as many secrets as possible. The Scroll imposter is soon killed by Fury due to his suspicion. After the invasion, the real Contessa is freed from captivity along with others kidnapped by the Scrolls. During the dark reign under Norman Osborn, Fury raids a hammer base. She calls Nick by phone and is shown as the new Madame Hydra, opening a box stolen from the Japanese containing an alien power source. After the mysterious group Leviathan attacks a Hydra base and captures Viper, Contessa goes to Leviathan's headquarters where she gives the box to their leader, Magadon, and there is where she murders the standing in Madame Hydra, Ophelia aka Viper. For powers and abilities, she has the strength, agility, and stamina of an Olympic athlete and is a rigorously trained martial artist. She also has been trained to use various guns and firearms and is very talented with knives. She is also shown to be a top-notch swordswoman. Viper is also gifted with disguises and acting, a brilliant strategist. She uses fangs and lipstick that are poisonous and often fatal. She is also masterful at stealth and espionage. Viper also employs a wide array of gases and has used a sedative to make others susceptible to her control. She has also been shown to use experimental and advanced weaponry such as a teleportation ring and claw attachments built into her gloves. She is shown to be a brilliant tactician capable of controlling huge criminal organizations. She has extensive combat experience and tactical knowledge. Her greatest weapon may be her influence and the vast resources that come with her position in organized crime. In other media, for animation, Viper has appeared in X-Men Evolution and The Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes. 
for a live action, Sendra Hess played Viper and Lisa Rina plays Valentina in the 90s Nick Fury Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. movie. Mallory Jansen plays an alternate version of Madame Hydra in the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. TV series. Russian actress Sevetlana Kochenkova plays Viper in the Wolverine film. In the Disney Plus TV series of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, actress Julia Louise Dreyfus portrays Contessa Valentina's Madame Hydra and also cameos in the Black Widow film. Her Madame Hydra character is rumored to round out the Thunderbolts in the MCU. For merchandise, Viper has a few collectibles out there. She was featured in the 90s Toy Biz Vintage Marvel Hall of Fame She-Force line and a Marvel Legends before as part of the Arnim Zola Bath Wave. The former terrorist leader of Hydra has appeared in over 950 issues. As we take a look at this Madame Hydra head sculpt, I don't know how I feel about it. Sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. I'll tell you what I like about it. One thing is that the right side of her face is covered which is really important because the character is scarred from the right side of the face, something I forgot to point out in my story time, but yeah, just letting you know that's how the uh, artist wanted her to look. It's not covered completely, I mean, you can still see the right side of her face, but for the most part, it does cover it. I like that it pretty much covers it to the point where there's some shadow that gets in there, so yeah. You know, you get that sort of element that covers the face, so it's really, really nice there. And the hair sculpt, it's a great hair sculpt. I didn't like it at first, but then it grew on me because it's different. I don't see this kind of hairstyle being made in their uh, female figures, but it's very uh, stringy, kind of squared out at the bottom here. But the fact that it has some, I don't know, just some dynamic to it. It looks really, really good. Then we get to the face and I'm just I'm not sure about it. I like that the eyeshadows are green. Her eyes are green. The lipstick is even like this nice kind of metallic green, giving it a nice lip gloss kind of effect. But I, oh man, it's the eyebrows. That's what's killing me. The caterpillar eyebrows. It's just way too thick. However, <laughs> this is way better than the last Madame Hydra figure. Like, way better. That wasn't even a Madame, I can assure you that. No matter what your opinion is about the face sculpt of this figure, you gotta admit that this at least looks like a Madame. <laughs> it's a side profile right there. Ooh, that's a long nose. I feel like something's missing here. Maybe not so much with this head sculpt. Um, I mean, it could have been better, no doubt. But I feel like an alternate head could have been very useful. Maybe one with the short, short, short hair. Maybe exposing her fangs out. Uh, that would have been very cool. I would have liked that so I can grab a second one and put with my X-Men. She just looks so surprised. She just got that look like you didn't pull out on time kind of look. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's still an update and much better than its predecessor. Taking a look at the rest of the body and this is where it's very, very frustrating for me. Because it's on that outdated basic female body that's just not good. Especially when you have a co-female in the wave that is updated with double pinless arms. And a new body mold and all that. This just got totally shafted. I'm just, I'm disappointed man. Still got the single jointed arms. These are the same arms that came with the Hellfire Club, Emma Frost, and uh, Black Queen Jean Grey. Uh, the upper torso is the AOA Rogue upper torso, so you do get that second hole in the back, which is absolutely terrible. Man, I don't know why they continue to keep using this. The good thing is that her hair covers that. Then we get the belt straps, and they look really, really nice. You got the metallic gold painted on the buckles, and the Hydra logo as well. So that came out really, really nice. Mine are clean right there. So I do appreciate that. Uh, even that little stud right there is painted in gold. So neat touch. I like that. I know the old one had a zipper going up the torso, but that was reused from a shield body or Black Widow, I believe. But uh, this is more comic accurate. That's one thing I will say. The skin tone is painted right there. I hate the two-tone plastic colors. Look at the hips. Look at the thighs right here. Uh, I just can't stand that. And then you get the pins, man. Like, come on. Again, if you're offering us a second female figure in a wave and the other one is pinless, just follow through and make the second one pinless because that is just not a good look. I don't want to hear that they're slowly trickling it out because you know what? They signed up for this. They signed up to make the updates and follow through with these figures. They got to own up to it. 
because when updated figures are outdated, it's no point in updating them at all. And if they wanted to stick with a thin body but keep it pinless, I mean, come on. Look at the AOA Rogue here. It is thin. It's on the thin side, I would say. You know, the thighs are on the thin side. But they made it pinless. You know, just having it pinless, they had the option, man. They just decided to cop out. And you get the boots painted in green and the serial number on the bottom of the foot. Now for accessories, she has two sets of interchangeable hands. So first ones up are the closed fists. And we have the trigger hand. So the left hand is the traditional hinge. The left hand is the vertical hinge. Then she comes with two handguns. And I gotta say, the snake print on the handle of this gun is really nice looking. I mean, take a look at that. That's pretty freaking cool. I just hate these guns because they're so flimsy, so gummy. Why couldn't they give the uh, old one that came with the uh, old Madam Hydra? But this one is sturdy. And I don't know why they switched up to these flimsy ones. That just sucks. And then you can store them in her holsters on both sides. So always good to have that kind of storage. Alright folks, and that was our Madam Hydra. I have her equipped with the rifle that came with the old Madam Hydra. <laughs> I got rid of that figure. I just kept the guns. I mean, can you blame me? Why would I keep that figure? That was a terrible figure. But I feel like a lot of things are missing. Like, one, she should have had her whip. Anyone can think of a green whip from another line that maybe I could, you know, let her borrow. That's one. Her whip is iconic to the character. Another thing that would have been really cool if they gave her her cloak. So we could have had a cool interchangeable head with the hood over it. You know what would have really given this figure some more value? If they included a Contessa Valentina head because, I mean, after all, we got a shield agent in this wave. So it would have been really cool to have a Contessa head that you can not only pop on this body, but on this body as well. That way I could have had a proper leader for my shield femme force since I'm waiting for them to update Sharon Carter so bad. So yeah, it just really bums me out, especially since Madam Hydra Viper is one of my favorite female villains. I mean, she's a major villain to me. If you were the leader of Marvel's largest terrorist organization, which is Hydra, that makes you a major villain. So they should have given her a major treatment for a major villain. Especially since she's also an X-Men villain as well. You know, I'm an X-Men fan, so I've seen her in the comics numerous times against the X-Men. So I do want a second one to display with my X-Men. This one's going to go on my Hydra display, but for the $24.99 price point, eh, it's not worth getting a second one for me. They could have made her worth buying two, but for some, she might not be worth buying at all. Now, to cover articulation with Madam Hydra, her head moves about that far up, so that's not bad for all the hair that she has. And it moves that far down, and you get some tilting action as well. Her arms move that far up, so slightly higher than a regular T-pose. They can move down, you can swing them around. Single jointed elbows that swivel and bend in at 90 degrees. Wrist swivel and a wrist hinge. The ab crunch can move that far forward that far back it does swivel pivots and it rocks around her legs spread that far apart oh boy these legs i can tell they're gonna warp on me wish they were pinless because she's gonna end up being bow-legged anyway her legs kick up that far up and they kick that far back you could rock them around you got the thigh swivel double jointed knees and no no oh can we get it no 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 heel to the hill hydra butt and her ankles move up that far, down, and they can rock all the way around. Got to kick comparisons off with the first superhero that she battled with. Here is Madam Hydra next to Captain America, and we also have Nick Fury. Here is Madam Hydra next to the Serpent Society, Constrictor, King Cobra, Cottonmouth, Rock Python, and Eel. Here is Madam Hydra next to a Hydra Soldier and Red Skull. Here is Madam Viper next to Spider Woman, who were once known to be mother and daughter, but was quickly uncanonized. Here is Madam Hydra next to her bodyguard and former lover, Silver Samurai, and her ex-husband, Wolverine. Lastly, here is Madam Hydra next to Blue Marvel. Blue Marvel review is on deck. Now for my on the shelf segment, here is Madam Hydra in my Hydra display shelf. Who should be the next Hydra leader Hasbro makes? Baron Von Strucker needs to happen ASAP. And now to wrap things up, my final rating is a 5.5 out of 10. 
Hasbro is now 0 for 2 with this character within a 10 year span. Like US Agent, they had 10 years to get it right but decided to coast along with the outdated route instead of going all the way with the latest updates. I'll always give credit where credit is due, but if they continue to give us bad figures, then they'll continue to get bad scores from me, and that's on them as a brand and not on me as a reviewer. This left much to be desired. No cloak, which I can do without, or her iconic whip. No Contessa Valentina head, which would have brought a lot more play to this wave for both this figure and the shield ladies. Nor an alternate Madam Viper head in general that exposes her fangs. A huge character trait. I know it sounds like I'm asking for a deluxe with everything I mentioned, but nowadays with the new price hikes, they have to give us more. On the bright side, they at least gave us 4 accessories with this figure as we get an extra set of hands and 2 guns. Which is more than what we get with some. But for us collectors, it always seems that enough is never enough, making us crave for more. I'm happy with the paint apps on mine and the display versatility, being able to add her on shelves like your Avengers villains, X-Men villains, and obviously your Hydra shelf. I'm also happy with the comic accurate costume, the hair sculpt, and the face that erases that abominable stain from the last figure, but it missed the mark on many areas. To conclude this wrap up, not even Hydra would hail to this figure. Now I kick it back to you, what do you think of this Viper Madam Hydra figure? Out of curiosity, how many of you will display her with your X-Men villains? Do you agree with the points I made? If not, no worries because as always, comment below, let me know, we'll chat about it. That was my review, please follow me on Instagram at xmany87, hit the notification bell so you always know when my latest videos are up, share and subscribe if you're new, enjoy the pics at the end of the video, see you on the next review, peace, peace. Hail Hydra!